So to explain a little bit, first of all, about what uh, stress does to your sexual body and your sexual response. So typically with long-term stress, there's kind of a shutdown of sexual body. People feel that, you know, it's numb. They can't feel it. Like it's not working. The machinery is turned off. Things are not getting up. It's like the power has been turned off. Yeah, that is the sensation people have. Because with long-term stress, there's a lot, you know, that happens in your system. It's not just a momentary agitation or uh, anxiety or self-consciousness in sex that you can just power through. You can't because there's uh, physiological changes that, you know, are not momentary. Yeah, you know, you've built a lot of stress chemistry that is there that is actually interfering with sexual chemistry. There's chronic mental noise that builds static in your nervous system. So there's like a buzzing fog that people experience in their feeling through which, you know, you can't feel sensation, you can't get into it. Yeah, it's like a, a feeling of like white noise in your body. And then your partner starts doing something and uh, you immediately feel that, you know, you have to get turned on uh, business as usual and it's not going to work. So when people have chronic stress in their life, and they keep trying to have sex, uh, then it, it becomes compound chronic stress. There is chronic stress from your job or whatever else is happening in your life that's affecting you, plus the chronic stress of trying to have sex and failing at it and being worried about uh, whether it's going to happen again today with your partner as soon as your partner starts initiating, yeah? So you're already stressed that, you know, you, you're probably not going to feel anything, you're going to have to perform and uh, it's it's probably going to be another failure. What people do with this, you know, usually works very badly. They do one of the two things. One is they just pretend that, you know, you should have sex as normal and they're just not feeling the stage where they should be at you know by this point yeah constantly trying to catch up to it all people use the brute force approach they just throw intensity at it they try to power through you know rub harder immediately move faster or something yeah sometimes it works usually same effect you know you can't feel anything this way the stress that the person carries within them uh, acts almost like a force field everything you throw at it everything you're trying to touch to um input uh, into their body to arouse them just bounces back to you so obviously you know people sometimes have their own custom solutions to it uh, the things that i believe uh, from experience works the best with all these cases of long-term stress is the effect of uh, melting we can call it sex needs to start with the practice of melting Typically, we think of sex as a process of turning on. You come into the room and you start turning on, turning on this in the body, this in the body, this in the body, your partner is going to be aroused. Not a great way to see arousal on any given day, but, you know, when somebody is stressed, particularly ineffective. All that static is going to jam everything that you're going to input and it's going to get bounced back to you, you know, essentially. So the first part of the arousal always has to be the melting, melting of this static, of this noise, of this ice wall that's been this force field that's been built up uh, in the person's system yeah and on top of it your partner is not exactly on the other side of the wall but they have retreated further into themselves into their head into their noise so what we need to do here is uh, a partner practice a tandem practice uh, you have to approach it from both directions you and your partner you are going to melt your partner's body and your partner is going to do their best to receive it and to um, go into their senses, to reconnect with their senses, yeah? So this process of melting, you can do it through the body. Uh, you can also do it through the genitals as well. So I'm going to explain uh, both of them in sequence. So you can do this through the body. So this absolutely has to be done in stillness without much movement at all. People start being hectic, they start doing too much, start touching this and poking this and moving there on the assumption that the sensation is going to arouse your partner. And your partner already feels under pressure to feel a lot, which they can't, and to be catching up with it. It's only going to stress them more. So uh, it has to start with stillness. First of all, through the body, holding, holding really close, holding your partner really close, imagine that you are sending to your partner from your body that really intense uh, nourishing energy feel how it radiates from your body like really want to nourish them maintain that intention like you are wanting to revitalize them but in stillness the bodies they do have subtle communication and uh, your partner will be feeling your intention through it for your partner what is important to do in that moment is to uh, really listen to that feeling flowing into their body because they can't just be you know thinking about their job or whatever else you know they have happening in their life so it's not going to work the person who is receiving the person who is stressed they have to use this opportunity to enjoy receiving this nourishment into their body 
is basically loving energy that they are absorbing from their partner. So it is essential that your partner has this time, time spent in stillness, absorbing that nourishing energy, but really listening to it, taking it into their body with that sense that it is nourishing their body right now. It is seeping deeper and it's making the body kind of gently happy and alive inside as time goes, yeah? So to explain a little bit what we are doing here and how sex will unfold from here. So when a person is stressed, the first step to arousal is relaxation, not excitation, which, we, which is what we normally think, yeah? Everything is jammed. First, they need to relax and only then excitation has a chance of happening. So that's the first part to arousal. So we are giving them a chance to relax, genuinely relax, as if it was a bath, you know, but, you know, enveloped with their lover's body. A really lovely way to relax. So without any movement, any touching, so they don't feel stressed that they have to, uh, they're under pressure to get excited, to follow sensations. Uh, they can relax genuinely, just in stillness, spend some time in it. The second thing that we are doing is we are bringing some positive physiology there to uh, melt down the negative physiology yeah when you envelop your partner really hold them intensely with a feeling even in stillness there's a lot of communication is happening there that's positive physiological communication so we are melting that stressful state inside your partner obviously we are not melting a literal ice wall on top of their body but we are melting that physiology within their body that is creating a stressful state, yeah? I intentionally don't want to use the word chemistry or hormones, like we are melting cortisol with oxytocin in this case. If I'm honest, I don't know if oxytocin can melt her cortisol. I'm just saying there is a bucket of cortisol in her body and bringing in lots of oxytocin through uh, closeness of the bodies can only be a good thing for it, right? But physiology obviously is complex. I believe that the major physiological factors uh, in sex are not necessarily hormones, uh, but they are neurological activities. Yeah, so which part of the brain we are affecting in this moment. So at the moment we are given this very soothing, uh, mindful, relaxing, uh, connecting state that is, you know, very closely associated with oxytocin, for example. So let's just call it all positive physiology. And it's creating that systemic melting effect on the noise and the negative uh, stuff that has been created by stress. So this happens organically by the bodies just being close together, naked, yeah? But the fact that your partner is also there listening and actively taking in every drop of that nourishing feeling, uh, that's a very, very important piece here. Because what we are doing there with that practice is we are essentially creating a little exercise of mindfulness. And mindfulness, obviously, is what is always recommended to lower your stress outside of sex. Like you've got to go and do it in the garden before you have sex. But actually, you can do it through your naked bodies straight away from the beginning. So you are already in the sexual context and you just have a little bit of time to practice mindfulness now so that you can really calm down, disconnect from all that noise give it a bit of time, their mind calms down. And the other thing that we are doing here is your partner is coming into their senses. So there's basically a practice of calming down and mindfulness, but also really listening to the uh, sensations in your body, coming into the senses of your body, reactivating your body that has been turned off by the effect of stress. There's not going to be any sensation, any uh, kind of sensation of pleasure or uh, excitement or arousal at that point. That's not what it is about uh, at this point. You're just creating the base field. Your body feeling nourished, just feeling the general sensation of aliveness in your body eventually. It's important to give it time. This is a progressive thing. Uh, little by little, it goes deeper and it becomes more and more alive. Yeah, It depends on your stress levels on a given day. Some days it will take more than others. At some point, there is a general feeling, I'm okay now. I feel relaxed. My body feels nice. And now it would be interesting to start touching or moving gradually, progressively, to start feeling some sensation in this alive space of my body. Yeah, And from there on, you move on. So uh, I've explained this in a very long way, but, you know, some days it might just be uh, a couple of minutes. Other days it might need, you know, five minutes, maybe even 10 minutes if it's a really stressful day. You do that first and from there on you unfold the process of arousal as normal from zero, like I showed you in the module on arousal. Yeah. So the exact physical practice of it in the Perfect Lover course, it is in the module on arousal. But you take the very first part, the most tranquil part of it. So that kind of body contact is what you want uh, in this case. For people who are on the holistic sex course, uh, it's the practice in the fifth module. 
the Calm version of it. That is exactly what you want to do. Just follow that. Another thing you can do is you can do the same with the genitals. Now, I recommend to uh, do this on the body first, like I've just explained, and then do this as well, the melting process on the genitals as well, because it's like a space within a space. It sort of needs its own activation and starting immediately with the genitals is going to be, you know, far less productive than if you activate the body first, yeah? That sequence that I showed you for all the techniques for the woman's genitals with hands or with oral. I'm explaining now to uh, men, but also to women themselves as well, yeah? Uh, a lot of holding first, just holding, relaxing, being held there, through the hand or through the face and absorbing, uh, the woman is absorbing that feeling that is coming uh, deeper into uh, the genital area and uh, expanding and making it alive. Yeah. Then that part of the sequence in the very beginning where the movements were uh, very delicate and uh, very soft, very subtle. Yeah. Uh, before the more intense movements on the clitoris because it activates the senses there in that gentle way without uh, the woman feeling under pressure. Uh, with the vagina as well, not a bad idea. Because the vagina, again, is a separate space, it's got its own connection, then on the outside. And that first connection in stillness, extending that. So just being there and practicing that is going to reactivate the vagina more and more. And then if you're involving fingers, then uh, that part of the sequence where the movement is still very subtle. Yeah, so stay with that. So these are the reactivating parts, and then from there you can escalate. For a man, the same thing, which involves the oral on a completely soft, unaroused penis from uh, the very beginning, from zero, when uh, the man doesn't feel any uh, any arousal there yet. Yeah. So this might be the case when a man is stressed, that he's disconnected from uh, from the penis, from the sensitivity there. Again, focus on the more still movements, holding it. Yeah. On the holistic sex course, you have the sequence. Doing oral that way that I showed you there can do wonders on reactivating sensitivity there. Sex without erection. And that can also be a, a very powerful addition, uh, very useful for this scenario. So I'm going to mention that quickly as well. I teach you two kinds of sex without erection. One in uh, complete stillness. So you're just activating the energetic uh, exchange there in a full relaxation. You know, it can be really, really profound kind of sex. Uh, the other kind of sex that I teach you there is with the movement. But for this situation to reactivate it from stress, the still version, definitely. It can be very powerful. So just spending five, ten minutes doing that, uh, not just for the man, but for the woman as well to do that is going to be very reactivating for the vagina. Yeah. 